George Guamatanga has managed to cement his position amongst iconic bankers and finance personalities who have steered this country forward over the years. From the streets of Kambuzuma to the leafy northern suburbs, GG, as he is affectionately known, has a personality that is as big as his stature and presence when he walks into a room. The world may see him as a hard-talking, frank, and bigger-than-life personality whose job is to keep the keys of finance to this country. But today on The EN Show, you will see another side to this family man who has inspired so many over the years. If there ever was a story of success, this would be it without a doubt. So join me in welcoming the permanent Secretary of Finance and Economic Development, George Guamatanga, to the EN Show. This you certainly do not want to miss. Gigi, how are you? Good afternoon. I'm well. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I was going to say Magadi Majigira, but in uh, Okay, I, I think you, you remember <laughs> from uh, our old days. My preference has always been George. George. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to adjust now in my new settings because there's uh, all this lot of protocol. Yes. Uh, I, I've tried to say to them that just call me George, but it's not happening. It's, it's not happening. <laughs> so, but like I think if throughout my whole career, my preference has always been George. Uh, it's it's uh, it's very simple. I think you remember the story I, I told you mm. uh, that we 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 had a football team right. at the former Barclays. Right. And we used to play what they call interbranch soccer. My manager then was uh, some guy called uh, Bonfess Nyoni. Yes. So we would then go to play soccer. And when you're playing soccer, you, do, you, you want someone to pass to you. And everyone's saying, Mr. Yoni, Mr. Yoni. <laughs> and then I say, like, what's the soccer pitch? By the time we say, Mr., the, the ball is the gone. Ball is gone. So, yeah, from there, I think we just said, look, it's much, much easier to be all the first name, first name faces, which, which is, I think, the culture uh, that we, we had at, at, look, at, 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 at the former. Uh, backless. I, I don't know what's there now. Yeah. But uh, in my new government responsibility, it's a completely different story. I hear you. But I've always called you Gigi, so I hope you don't mind if uh, I call no, you no, Gigi. I think that, that, that's much <laughs> e even easier. <laughs> okay, great. So welcome to the show. And I'm just so excited. I haven't seen you in a long time. And um, a lot has happened since we last met. But I thought, you know, it would be really interesting for people to understand who you are behind the persona, behind um, the bigger than life person that we see you in, on social media. And yeah, so who is George Tongesai Guamatanga? You're from Kambuzuma. Tell us about that. No, I think behind the, the official set, uh, look, I'm, 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 I'm a family man. I am a brother um, to, to two of my siblings uh, I'm a, and, and also a, a sister. Um, two of my sisters passed on. We were previously a family of six. Um, I've got nephews. I've got uh, nieces. Um, I, I always say father of seven, which, which always confuses people. Tell us. Well, well, they, well, now try and, 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 and do the mathematics and the numbers uh, from probably information that is in the public domain. Yeah. Uh, but I always say that I've got uh, four daughters. Right. And, and three sons, wow. actually, with a range of ages from 33. Uh, you can actually see probably that maybe the mathematics might not add. Uh -huh. uh, and I think the last one, I think turning four actually. Turning four. Oh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in, oh, in two weeks' time. Wow. So, yeah, so it's from 30 to, to four. To four years old. Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, quite, quite very, very busy. So, so <laughs> I'm, I'm more like of, of a family man uh, behind everything else. Uh, because I need to make up time. Datone Masukuru as well. I, I think my, wow. my, my other daughter and I also have got a, a, a son. Okay. Uh, who just turned two recently as well. 
So yeah, look, so behind everything else, yeah, uh, and a part-time farmer, if I may also, I'm, if I may also add over and above all the other responsibilities. Yeah. Um, I'm still a businessman. I try also to balance my responsibilities. I had businesses that I'd started before I joined government, which I've technically moved on to most of my family members to manage while I, I carry out this much, much more important role with, yeah, with a little bit of oversight. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a really a, a, a full plight uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. That sounds so hectic, Gigi. I'm th trying to think of all the different facets of your life, and I'm, and I'm really awed by that. So, but your journey started in Kambuzuma, and I really want us to go back to the 1970s. How was it growing up um, in Kambuzuma, and what kind of a person would, was Gigi then? I mean, if we were to talk to your friends, what would they say this individual called George was? Who was he? I think they would describe me as someone who largely kept to himself, um, very obsessed with books, very obsessed with education. Uh, but I think I actually realized at that stage that, in that under those circumstances, only education would actually change uh, my circumstances and the circumstances of, of, of my, my, my family. Mm -hmm. So I was very much obsessed with, uh, with, with, with my education and um, growing up. Um, but, I, look, but I think being um, an introvert, being uh, a little bit closed up was actually circumstantial okay. than, than anything else. Because as I indicated to you, that I had two elder sisters. And I'd no, I did not have an older brother. Mm. And that was always a disadvantage growing up in Kambusuma because it actually meant that if you go out to play, mm. everyone else had a big brother to defend them. I didn't. And you didn't. Yeah. So, wow. So I had to actually find self-coping mechanism, right? Yeah. So even if you had a, a small fight with your age mate, then the brothers would just come and maybe hold your hands behind and say, no, look, hit him. And I had no big brother to defend me. So I had to, to find the coping mechanisms, really, to, 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 to manage uh, without uh, a big brother to, 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 to defend me. Yeah. So, so, so I, I think that that's become almost a, a very natural setting. Uh, uh, that, look, I, I am always stronger uh, if I sit in a corner by myself and think through things, that, that, that's where that actually came from. Mm. Yeah. So I, I took a ride um, recently in Kambuzuma just to kind of understand the places that you grew up um, with one of your uh, people that you also grew up with. I did a bit of research. And whilst we were driving through <coughs> Kambuzuma, I must say it was really interesting to see the places that you had grown up. Even the schools, you know, um, Kurai, and um, the high school that you went to. For me, I think the question then becomes, when you were in grade one, I know that uh, one of your teachers wrote on your report card. Yeah. What was that report card? And why is that report card so important to you? Because you've mentioned it before, um, but I want to hear from you. You see, I, I don't know how I ended up actually keeping that report card because that was my first report card. Right. Um, I, I think it was just by coincidence that I actually managed to keep it. Eventually, I laminated it. So it's a, 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 a November 1978 report card. Um, but what is very interesting is that I think we've done some exams. Um, I think are four of them. Uh, and I actually managed to get 80 out of 80 wow. on that report card. But more importantly, the teacher then, uh, a lady um, uh, called Mrs. Gusha, also wrote on that that... Uh, Tongesa is a very intelligent boy with great leadership qualities. That was very interesting because w when I still look through the report card, I say, okay, at that age, what had this teacher noticed? What did she see? Uh, yes, yeah. I, I would have loved uh, to have a conversation with, with her to say, look, what, did, what have you seen uh, at that very, very young age to, to actually write that on the, on the report card. But look, I, I did write on that and, 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 and along the way, uh, and tried to actually grow uh, my, 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 my leadership skills um, up to today. Mm. And, and I know you mentioned that, you know, there was a moment where you realized that um, 
you wanted to really pursue your education because that was your ticket out yes. of Kambuzuma. Yeah. And um, was there a specific incident that happened that triggered that where you said, you know what, this is not what I want. This is not what I want for even my children. So <coughs> this is how I'm going to do it. No, no, look, I think I, I, I come from a very hardworking family. Yeah. Uh, my father worked for a furniture manufacturing company and my mother did all kinds of things uh, from making her own clothes to sell, blankets, from even working as a maid uh, in, in town uh, just to get us through, through school. Uh, but look, I think it was uh, a picture which I thought that I, 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 I wanted to change. Um, so, and, and more importantly for me, I think during those days, I'll tell you one very incident which said, you know what, you actually have to get out of this. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so there was a show then which was called uh, Sandak. I don't know. Oh, I know the Sandak. Yeah. Yeah. So, but see, the Sandak is a, a, a plastic made shoe. Right. So, yes, it's a plastic made shoe. And uh, in winter, it's, again, because it's plastic, it's cold. Mm -hmm. In summer, it's, again, it's hot. But, but that was the story, actually. The story is that so it's plastic. Mm. So even when, we, when you would wear a sandak, and people would actually sing about it, yeah? People would actually sing about it. They say that, no, sandak is a shoe that can't be repaired. They would sing in Shona. Yeah? yeah? They, 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 there was actually a tune around it. It was a commercial. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, so but, but you see, because of the circumstances then, I had to repair my sandak. Wow. Yes, I had to repair my sandak. Because you see, you, you, the, when you grow, when you're growing up, your foot also grows. So quickly, the shoe just becomes a smaller size. Right. Then it would actually open up at the back. Yeah. So I actually had to do my own shoe repair. Wow. Yes. But, but more importantly, you see, what, what, just because of the situation that we were in then, so it was a black shoe. But sometimes there was no black thread for me to even sew it. So, it so, so I then have to use a white thread and then look for black polish wow. to polish the thread so that it would look black. So even when people said, look, you can't repair a sadak, I used to repair my, 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 my sadak. And, and I think from there, I then say, you know what, these circumstances actually require a, a different uh, uh, behavior. They, 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 they require a different thinking if, if we were going to, 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 to get out of, of, of that situation growing up in Kambuzuma. Wow. Yeah. And I remember Sandax. Oh, my goodness. I had a couple of pairs, and they used to come in different colors. Yes. So I, I remember that so vividly. <coughs> but we're going to take a break, Gigi. And for me, when we come back, I want us to explore, you know, I know you've done a lot to give back into your community. And... Um, People probably don't know this about you, but I think today on the EN show, we're going to show them another side of you. So if you're watching the EN show, please do not change the platform. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with George Goamatanga. See you.
Welcome back to the EN Show. And today, our special guest is George Guamatanga, who is the Permanent Secretary for Finance and Economic Development. So, George, we were talking just before we went off to break. You were talking about Sandax and, you know, the life in Kabuzuma. Um, but I know that you have given back significantly to your local community and um, you've been quiet about it. Tell us, you know, why was that important for you to do some of the things that you've done? I know that um, there was a lab, a computer lab that was established at the primary school that you went to. Um, why is giving back important? Look, I, I think uh, for anyone to be successful in life, it's because someone is given an opportunity either directly or indirectly. Uh, and I, I think for me to be where I am today, there are so many people who have been involved to, to try and support to allow me to grow. So I, I always believe that it's important also to go back into the community, especially the community where I grew up in, to, to give back, and uh, even beyond that community. Um, so you have spoken about the lab, uh, where we've done some solar installations in some of the schools. Um, but for me, the most important one is really the, the, the education support, getting people into universities, uh, local universities, universities in South Africa. I, I know of uh, um, uh, some people or, uh, that I've taken into universities in the United States of America. It, it's just part of the philanthropic work, just to make sure that, look, uh, whatever opportunity that you have, but sometimes, I always say that, look, sometimes we are just a conduit. Right. You, you are blessed so that you are a conduit of allowing other people uh, to, 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 be, to be blessed. I think the latest one was actually helping some young guy go to the United States of America to, into a soccer academy. Wow. Uh, even when, we, when I did that, I actually said to the promoter, don't mention it. So, but he didn't mention it, but he mentioned it in a very long and, and subtle email. And people actually picked up and said, ah, no, we know who we is know actually. Who this is. We know who is this is. <laughs> and the way that he had actually returned it. So, but we also go back to the community every Valentine's Day, actually. Really? We, we, and this is actually my daughter's idea to say, look, let's not spend money on present on this Valentine's Day. Right. So on Valentine's Day, we go back to the community with grocery packs. Yeah. I think we've been doing it for the past two years. Last year, I think we touched, we, do, we mostly focus on widows. Uh, in Kabuzuma. Last year we did over 200 packs. This year we've just ordered about 500 packs. Wow. So I think we'll cover all the widows uh, and, 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 and actually more uh, 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 people within that. Mm -hmm. So I was doing my tally of people that we've been able to send throughout the past 20 years actually right. to university. I think we are almost around 63. Wow. Yeah, that we have actually managed to, to, to send. But look, it's, it's, I always say that it's not about me, right? Uh, and it's not about the publicity mm -hmm. uh, around it. Mm -hmm. And our preference is that we want to do everything uh, quietly. Mm -hmm. So we, 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 we don't take cameras or anything when we, 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 we do this. So we, we, are, we are now actually going to, 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 to launch the, the, the foundation now formally. But we, we hope that our modus operandum uh, of the GG Foundation will not change. It's something that we'll continue to do in a very quiet manner and to continue to support those uh, uh, that need their help wherever we can. And I think that that leads straight into my next question because my, my thought is that, you know, when you, you've made it out of your circumstances, um, your childhood circumstances, our children are so disconnected to where we've come from. But um, it seems like your children are very involved and they understand that, you know, it's been a journey. How has that impacted them? And I think you're answering it to say this is the evolution of the of the foundation. But they're actively, you know, involved in the foundation. Is it, you said it's their idea. It's, 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 it's my, 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 my eldest daughter's idea. It's a tender idea. She, she, yeah, look, like on giving back on, 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 on Valentine. Right. Uh, I think she, she does a lot herself. Uh, especially with the distribution of sanitary wear wow. and it for, for also within the disadvantaged uh, um, uh, com communities. Uh, so I, I think that that general sense of, of, of giving yeah. is, 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 is there we, 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 within my, my, my children. Mm. Yeah. 
So you, when you're talking about um, your children, I've had the pleasure to interact with your kids and uh, my Goa Matanga on several occasions. How important is family to you? Just tell us, you know, I, I know you've said it's important, but maybe um, I, I just want to understand how, how much of a pillar it has been for you over the years. <coughs> no, no, I, I, th I think for everyone, I think family is the first and most important thing. Um, uh, I've always said it, even during my, our other working days together, where I always used to say to you guys, look, you, it's one person. It's, you, you, you don't have someone who come to work, someone who go to church, mm -hmm. someone who go home. Look at the complete person. You are the same person. Right. And that's why even when, uh, even up to now, if I think I need to attend my daughter's swimming gala, it's in my diary. Mm -hmm. It's not something that I consider to say, if I have got extra time, or else, then I'll do it. Right. Or if I've got nothing else important to do, then I'll do it. That becomes very important. So even if I have to do a school run, which I irregularly do, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's in my diary. So you do the school run? You pick up the girls from school? No, no, I thought, that's why I when said you have when, time. I, when I have time. Yeah. But when, when I do it, it is in my diary. Right. This is the same diary I use for everything. That's the same diary I'll put netball match. Mm. In the same diary I'll put swimming gala. In the same diary I'll say school run. Mm. In the same diary I'll say lunch with the girls. Mm. So you, 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 you can't then try to run your, 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 your other life outside your broader and bigger life because there's always enough to do at work. Mm. So, so if you actually don't prioritize family, family time and family events, you actually realize that you'll never attend any of them. Mm. So especially now during the days of electronic diaries, someone just find a spot, they put in a, 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 an event for you, mm. that's it, the time is gone. Yeah. yeah. So, so I actually make sure that I run one life, I run one diary, mm. but uh, if you now come and say, we want here to show and it's saying, There's a, run, yeah. then the school run is we'll what take precedence, uh -huh. yes. So if you now come and say, we have a meeting here, I guess it's very important, especially in my new role, right. that then look, I can make other arrangements, but most of the times it will tell you that I, I am committed. Mm. You might actually be surprised that the commitment is actually just picking up the girls, getting some ice cream and dropping them at home. But for that one hour, for that one hour, 30 minutes, mm. that's what I want to be doing. That's how I actually think that family is, is, is very important. So you, you, you can't make up extra time when you're done with your career, when you're done with everything for family. So you, 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 you have to make sure that everything fits into your diary and prioritize what is important to you. Yeah. And, and family is very important. And because I, because I know you, um, I've seen on your status, you know, when you have been at, at school, you know, events, and you're the parent that is taking the videos and cheering them on. So I, I know that it's also maybe very important for your kids to, for, the, for, you, for them to see you there. Um, so being a father to girls, um, I just, I'm curious about that because how have you approached raising them? Are there specific les lessons that you want to share with them um, and prepare them for dating? You know, all of these yeah. things. How has it been? Look, I, th I think it's very interesting raising girls and raising boys. It's very, it's very different. Uh, but girls are very funny because you can actually see when you are slowly being replaced by other <laughs> important people. Uh, I, I, I always say that to my daughter, to, to retain that, look, when she was a young girl, yeah. I would get at least three to four kisses a day, good morning kiss, uh -huh. a kiss when she goes to school, a kiss when I get back home, and a kiss when she's going to bed. Right. But as she was growing up, those kisses disappeared. They started disappearing. Wow. So uh, my assumption is that, that, look, maybe they are now going elsewhere. Right. Yeah, so, so they start disappearing. Mm -hmm. And when, when they get to zero, I think as a parent, They're gone. That, that's the sign <laughs> that <laughs> those, those kisses are now going elsewhere. They, 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 they are no longer for you. But, but I think the important thing is j just allow them to be themselves. I think allow them to grow, give them the necessary experience. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you one of my actual beliefs. 
So my nephews, my nieces, daughters, everyone, I'm the one who have taught them to drink. Wow. I don't drink myself. But if you talk to my daughter, they'll tell you that I'm the one who taught her to drink. Wow. Tell me about that. How did you do that? And how did you start the conversation? <laughs> yeah. So, so, so look, I, I would say to them, I know, guys, I know that you like, you want to taste this drink. Mm. I know you've been keen to taste it. So once they are um, 18, right? Yeah. Every Friday, I open the bar at home. And I'll just tell them that don't touch these two, whatever, special, everything else here, you can It's drink. open season. It's open season. Because you see, why I do that? Because I would rather have them do the experiment. With you. In a safe environment. Yes. Yeah? Yes. So that they know that if you drink whiskey after two glasses, you are crawling. If you drink wine after four glasses, I think your head is spinning. Wow. If you take vodka, this is what it will do to you. You actually don't want that experience outside. outside. Mm. Yeah? Because there was two there was two experiments. They'll still do it. Yeah? They will still do it. I think trying to think that they won't do it is naivety as a parent. Right. Yeah? So so I would allow them to do all their tests, all their experiments in the house. Right. And by the time they go out, they will know that after two glasses of wine. I think I'm about okay. After one, two, three glasses of cocktails, this is where I am. And yeah, so, so that they don't go out and test, do the experiment in what I would personally regard as an unsafe environment. Right. That's, that, that's first and foremost. So, 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 so that's, very, that, that's one way that I've actually managed and grown my, my kids. But the other thing really is about... Uh, even when I drop them, say like they ask to be dropped at a friend's house mm. for whatever that they want to go there, I don't drop them at the gate. I never drop them at the gate. Where do you drop them off? I leave them in the hand of an adult wherever I drop them. Okay. So it, it cements the responsibility yes, to say... Yes, I'm not going to go to the gate. Right. If, yes. And there are occasions where I've gone to drop them off and there's no adult, and I'm saying, no, I'm not leaving you here. And you take them back home? I take them back home. Wow. And when I pick them, I want to pick them from that adult. Right. Yeah? That, that, that's simple and, and straightforward for me. So, so, I, 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 so I'm not going to park by the gate and say, no, get in. No. Mm. I want to say, whom am I a responsible and accountable person? I'm leaving my child in the hands of. Who is that person? Mm, yeah. Mm. So, so those occasions where I've taken the back, back home, there are actually numerous ones where I've said, there's no adult here, and I'm taking you back home. Let's go. Yeah. Mm. Then if I drop you at one particular place, I want to come back and pick you up from there. Mm. Yeah. I can't drop you here, then I come back and pick you up from another place. Right. So I drop you here, this is where I'm, I'm coming back here. Right. At this time, to pick you up from there. Ah, parenting is is hard, Gigi, yes. because for me, just just that lesson of you know let's drink together yes. and let's see and let's stretch ourselves together. Yes. Um, that that I think even I am also learning that to do that as well. Um, but it's also very painful to then see them stretched when they start crawling on the yeah. floor. You don't Which want to see them in that space. But but see, if they've crawled on the floor with me, it's better. In their own house. Right. Yeah? Mm. Right? So you can imagine if that experience Oof. is at some crazy nightclub, crazy bar elsewhere, yeah. or at some crazy house party elsewhere. Which is the reality for so Which many. Which is the reality, right. really. Yeah. Right. So what, what's better? Yeah. I have so many questions, but we're going to pick up this conversation. As you can see, this is hot, guys. <laughs> this is the Ian Show. We will be right back. We'll see you shortly. I am with George Gormatanga, um, and you don't want to miss the next segment. My name is Tanaye, and I am a freelance writer, blogger, and a social media content creator who's slowly moving into video creation for YouTube. I've been writing for the past three years 
and to be honest i've enjoyed the experience i enjoy it because i get to work from home i get to work from awesome cafes around town i get to work from parks wherever i really feel the inspiration can come from broadband has helped me because it has made my life a lot easier because i get to interact with a lot of cool and awesome people that inspire my work i'm living in the moment are you Welcome back to EN. So Gigi, we were talking about, you know, raising <coughs> girls um, and, you know, I think parenting culture, which is very challenging. I mean, this day and age, especially with the advent of social media. Now, how do you protect your children from social media if you can at all? Because um, the persona and the personality that you are, there is a lot that comes out on social media. And how do they take that? Look, I think it's one of the biggest challenges, right? Uh, especially on the, given the nature uh, of, of, my, of my current role and the lot of unsubstantiated um, um, information and accusations that just come out into the media. Uh, people just write whatever they want to write. Sometimes they even create whatever they, they want to create. Um, so some of it look they're exposed to it. You, you, you look, these guys are now very, very smart, and uh, yeah. Um, I think uh, my 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 eldest daughter will always try and say, look, switches off if she thinks that there's something that is actually irritating her <laughs> on social media. She just goes away from social media. Yeah. But it's I think it's just about preparing them if something adverse or whatever is going to come out and say, look, this is going to come out, and this is the true story. And this is the implication of whatever is going to, to come out. So I, I think it's almost the, the conversations around whatever will come out in the, in the social media. And it's, it's, it's unavoidable. Right. There, there, there's a lot actually going on with, 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 with the media these days. Mm. And I'm, I'm thankful because when we were doing our research on you as well, we didn't see a lot on your children and on your family, which I think is very good. And I, and respectfully so, I think the Zim media has that respect to say, when we're looking at a public figure, let's also not then involve innocence. Yeah, in, in yeah, 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 yeah but deliberately, uh, I've always tried right. to keep my family away from the media. Yeah. yeah? Um, so I, I have protected them that way. Um, that, that they, they are not, but obviously now as they start growing up and having their own personalities, uh, their own personalities on Instagram handle, yes. TikTok, and all those kind of things. Yeah, you you still need to to, to check. So, but that's the role for the mom. It's, it's, it's not to be without it. So the mom follows all of them. Does all, she really? No, no, no. Yeah, she she has got the yeah, only. Account just to follow, just to see uh, <laughs> what they, 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 they will be doing. Okay. And the, the phones, actually, the rule again um, is that it's our, it's our phones. It's not theirs. It's not theirs. It's, we have given them the phone so that if you are in danger, if you need to conduct that, in an emergency, you can conduct us. Right. And if we need to find you, we need to conduct you, in an emergency, we can conduct you. It's our phone. No password, nothing. If phone ye do. Yeah? yeah, it's not your phone. Right. Yeah, until you are 18, it's our phone. Wow. It is our phone. We, we've got full access uh, to, to that phone to see everything that is actually happening on that phone. Yes. Uh, from time to time, I also even want to have a look at even the music that they are listening to. Right, because music is a big influence. It's a big influence. So yes. I also have a look at what music that they are actually uh, are listening to. I, I go into their history. They are not allowed to delete anything. You delete, we, we, we confiscate the gadget. Wow. Yeah, so we, I need to see all your history, chat history, your, 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 on YouTube, Google, everything. So it's access, but it's limited access. It's controlled access. It's controlled access. Which is very important it's, online it's, it's, right it's, it's now. It's controlled access. Again, because school is online, everything is online. They also need to research even for school right. online. You actually can't, in this digital age, not allow them to have access. 
Yeah. But it has to be, they have to know that it's checked, it's managed, it's controlled. So do they, do you think, or maybe have you had discussions with them to, to kind of gauge, do they have a sense of uh, obligation to be above board because they're the daughter of George Gomatanga? Well, I think kids will be kids. I, 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 look, you, regardless you of who you are. Yeah, 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 regardless of who you are. I think you, you will always find one or two things that you, you don't like and you need to have a, a, a conversation around it to say, no, this is not uh, um, acceptable. Uh, other one, look, so it's not like I would say, look, there is a 100% compliance in our banking <laughs> language. <laughs> so from time to time, look, there are things that you then really have to, 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 to manage. Uh, I think I had a run in, I think some four years ago with the younger one with some game that she was playing and she kept on buying lives. I don't know what, what, what this game was about. She said, what are we buying? She said, no, I was buying some life. Uh, where, where, what life are you buying? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but it, it happened that she didn't have to agree that, no, you can't because this is money. This is money. And, and, and she had really run in a very huge uh, bill. B very, very huge bill. So, I, so, the, yeah, so but they are kids and you should expect that those things will, will, will happen. So, so you <coughs> celebrate your fiftieth birthday party, yes. and there is so much about yes. you and your fiftieth birthday yes. party. When you saw that, what what went through your mind? Well, I, I was actually surprised because uh, again, the birthday was arranged by my daughter in South Africa and my daughter here. Uh, that's the one who arranged the. the was the, it a surprise for you, though? Look, surprise don't normally work with me, so they hinted me <laughs> that that look make sure that you are available. Available. But but I did, most of the things that were happening, I was not aware. Right. Look, even the invites, who they invited, and whatever, I I I I, I, I was not aware about that. Mm. Um, and but but I, I think the, the issue really is, I spent and there was actually a, a debate. To say how many years did I spend in the backless? Right. I officially left the backless when I joined government, because even when I joined government, I was actually supposed to be only twelve months garden leave. Mm -hmm. So I started with backless when I was seventeen. I think I've put that on record before, uh, in September of nineteen eighty nine, uh, and uh, I officially left in October of 2018 when I, I then joined government because I was still employed by Barclays then. I was on my, on my, on my garden leave, right. which roughly just gives me over 28 years of experience with Barclays. Wow. So, so the question I was actually raising is that, why do you want to describe me as the permanent secretary, right? When I've only been there for two and a half years. Amazing. Right? Why are you not actually talking about my 29 year? As a banker. As a banker. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah. And, and look, it's, it's, it's not like uh, I, I, I never used to throw birthday parties. I always used to throw uh, similar parties for my kids, for everyone, uh, when I was in, 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 in banking. Mm. Uh, and even when I left banking, my intention was just to retire, run my businesses, run the farm, and many other things. That's what I wanted to do, yeah, until this invite came through. So, so, so you, you can't now decide to look into my life or who I am on the basis of my two years. And be selective. And, in, and be selective. Right. With the information and, 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 and everything else. Mm. I, 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 I ran one of the biggest institutions in this country for, for over 10 years. I was a, a senior official within the same institution for almost uh, 12 years, right. if you just to try and do the, the numbers. So, so why is the description only based on one year of two years of, of, of government service, mm. which I think is very necessary, uh, again, uh, for, 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 to be able to share the experience that we have in the private sector and, and bring it into, 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 into the public sector. Right. So, so that, that for me, that was the surprise to say, okay, wh what is this noise all about? I, I couldn't understand why there was that noise. But there are also lessons to be known, mm. to be learned there, mm. uh, to say, yeah, okay, maybe if you're in public office, there are certain things that you manage, maybe you manage uh, differently. Mm. Uh -huh. So I can't, I can't just say that, look, I came out of that, all that noise without any lessons learned. Mm. So next time, I think... Uh, We're not going to hear about the birthday yeah, You're never going to hear about <laughs> my, 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 my party at all. We are, we are going to confiscate people's phones and whatever. But it doesn't mean that I'll stop celebrating life. Yes. Look, I, I had a very 
my family and I had a very bad ordeal with COVID. Yes. Um, w w during the early days of, 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 of COVID in uh, uh, 20, th that 2020, yes. And you were very open about that experience, <coughs> yes. Gigi. Yeah. So, so how was it to go through it? Because at the time, I remember, I actually yes. sent you a message and I was saying, you know, stay strong because a lot of people were passing on at the time. Yes. And I remember you really sharing your experience yes. uh, with, with, with people publicly. Yes. Um, but uh, how was it and why did you make the decision to do that? Look, I, I think after my experience, uh, uh, nine days in the hospital on oxygen, I came out and being part of the policy maker making uh, within government. When my own experience, I came out there clearly that one, we did not understand the disease and people did not understand the disease. And it was important to share and to give people information about what COVID was really about. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and I, I remember you did an interview and one of the, one of the things that you mentioned <coughs> in your interview with ZBC was you said you were actually approving a lot of you know, decision, you were making decisions yes. whilst you were on oxygen yes. because the oxygen was helping you to at least have some stability. Yes. Um, but number one, I said to myself, this guy was still working when he was in a hospital. Why was that important for you to continue working? And then another thing was, was it important as well to understand what was happening on a larger level yes. in the country whilst you were actually personally going through it? No, 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 look, we were spending lots of money on the quarantine centers as government, lots of money on isolation, isolation centers. Uh, we were, people were coming in when we were keeping them, feeding them, giving them lots of uh, food, rice, Coca-Cola, whatever. But when I was in the hospital, what I actually realized was important that it was, that it was just the oxygen. Wow. Yeah, so even as government, when we were, refurbishing these hospitals, quarantine centers, isolation centers. I always get pictures of nice uh, uh, bathrooms, nice toilets, nice passages. Look, when you're on oxygen, you don't even go to the bathroom. You don't care. Yeah, you don't care about it. When, so so when, when, when it really attacks you, what you need is oxygen. Mm. Yeah? So in the hospital bed where I was sitting, there was even a ventilator, and I looked at that machine. That machine looks like a, an, an aeroplane cockpit. Oh my gosh. It's, it's not, and I said, look, I don't want to be on this machine. And with, uh, for the simple reason that I was saying, who actually can operate this machine? Wow. And it looks very, very, very complicated. But the noise was about quarantine centers, isolation centers, ventilators and whatever. But I just learned that what saved my life was a little bit of medication and oxygen. Mm -hmm. so, so when I was in hospital, when I was working, I was sending instructions to my guys. I say, can we have a complete look at this? Wow. Yeah? yeah? Can we have a complete look at this? What we need to do is oxygen. And now, I think as we are aware, government now manufactures uh, through a government-linked company. It's on oxygen. We are sufficient on oxygen. We can even, as government, uh, export oxygen to other countries. But it came out from that realization that this is the most critical part mm. if you, 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 you have COVID. Mm. Yeah. And I think sometimes God works in wondrous ways because... Yeah. In all honesty, I think going through that experience really helped you shape yeah. uh, where we are as a nation right now. No, 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 definitely. So even when the issue about vaccines came up, mm. uh, we were very clear that, look, we need oxygen, but we also need to inoculate as many of Zimbabweans as, as possible. Mm. So let's buy for vaccines. So, that, that, so, so, so I, I think it was actually good that as a policymaker that I had actually the, the, the first-hand experience of what it is getting to hospital and actually seeing what works and what does not work and being able then to influence policy in what I actually think the right way for, 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 for Zimbabwe. And we, I think as far as COVID is concerned, we have actually invested in the right things as a country. Mm -hmm. and, and, and our record actually speaks for, for itself, the number of people who have been inoculated, and the, the oxygen that we are now um, manufacturing, and the more vaccines that we have. Anyone who wants to be, to be vaccinated can walk into any center and you can be vaccinated. I remember, you know, talking to people who were overseas <coughs> and they were asking me, Emily, so when are you guys getting the vaccination? I was like, what? You guys have not been vaccinated yet? I'm on my second vaccination. <laughs> Where are you guys? And I think that was one thing that a lot of Zimbabweans were proud of, that we had access to it. Yes. Um, and so for me, uh, I was very, that was a proud moment for us. Um, but 
I, you are talking about leadership yes. capabilities. Um, we're going to come back to that question, Gigi, on our break, because I have a couple of personal experiences I want to share with people <laughs> around your leadership. So you know what, guys? We are still with Gigi um, here on the EN Show. So we'll see you soon.